Now that the legendary assassin from Universe 6 Hit has left our world after wanting to kill Son Goku and completing his mission by the request of Goku himself, we begin to focus more on what's been going on with Gohan the entire time, with Gohan now being casted in a movie as the Great Saiyan Man. However, just because Gohan is starring in his own movie does not mean he is safe from trouble. What's going on, Dragon Ball Super fans? Welcome to my Dragon Ball Super Episode 73 review entitled Gohan's Disaster, Great Saiyan Man's Unbelievable Movie Adaptation leading into Dragon Ball Super episode 74 in what will be another slice of life episode guys again keep in mind this video will contain massive amounts of spoilers so in case you guys don't want to be spoiled make sure you guys go on ahead and fast forward the video and again quick plug guys before we begin if you guys are not following me at Twitter make sure to follow me at Twitter the link will be down below for more exclusive Dragon Ball information and of course if you guys are new to the channel if you guys love Dragon Ball make sure to smash that subscribe button for all it is in Dragon Ball reviews and discussions of course and of course if you guys cannot wait for the upcoming universe survival arc then make sure to let me know down below guys this episode actually carries weight into what's going to happen during that arc especially if you guys have checked out my spoilers for dragon ball supers episode 74 through 77 then you guys know exactly what happens but again a lot of us have been wanting to see gohan actually do something everybody has been wondering has gohan been training has gohan been doing something to prepare himself actually no he's been preparing for his movie role and his dream match against hercule because many people out there don't know that, you know, Grey Saiyan Man is the protector of the people, and of course, Hercule is the world martial arts champion of the world. He quote-unquote defeated Cell, quote-unquote defeated Majin Buu. So what better way to have Grey Saiyan Man and Mr. Satan in a movie together? So again, guys, keep in mind, if you're expecting some sort of crazy action, squirrels getting blown up and people just getting shot out of buildings, it's not gonna happen. This is not the Goku Black story. So expect to see things go in a very light tone. So don't really expect Gohan to have like some sort of crazy transformation super saiyan rage super saiyan 5 or something like that because so far the emphasis on gohan is building up towards this tournament so far he's in this movie and we get to see the progression throughout this episode but nonetheless we start the episode off right where we left off and we see how jocko the galactic patroller is there he's eating some food and then we see jocko begin to explain about wadagash and the thing inside of a jar and he's saying that wadagash is an evil criminal but he definitely won't escape because he has him like in this jar or whatnot so we see jocko he's all cool calm collected and we haven't seen Jocko in a very long time so he seems to keep this evil parasitic criminal within this jar and he keeps emphasizing that there is no way that you know Wadagash can escape and we see how Jocko's eating from what seems to be you know noodles or whatever he's just sitting there eating and then all of a sudden we see how Wadagash escapes and I don't know about you guys but if you guys remember Digimon Wadagash reminds me of Diaboromon he reminds me of Diaboromon and he just so happens to escape and he flies off in space and we see how Jocko is there and he's a little dumbfounded he's just like crap like what happens now you know like naturally he escapes and now this is all on Jocko's end because he was the one that was responsible for him but nonetheless we see a couple of teaser promos to this great Saiyan man versus Hercule stuff hyping it up to be like this massive fight between Gohan and Hercule and stuff and it just reminds you of Batman versus Superman away starring Barry Karn and we see how Barry Karn is like this like you know major Hollywood kind of like actor or whatever and Gohan's like you know well how come it's not me you know we see the media being hyped around Barry Karn you know everyone's surrounding his car we see the media the paparazzi you know everyone's giving him attention and one of the reporters questions Barry Karn you know playing Great Saiyan Man and apparently he also takes shots at Great Saiyan Man saying that he's no longer around or whatnot and we see how Barry wants the movie to be titled Barry Karn instead of you know Great Saiyan Man versus Master Satan uh, because obviously enough he seems to have a very big ego he's talking a lot of trash to the directors you know he's just one of those like really narcissistic assholes that you just want to punch in the face you know blonde hair blue eyes on the set trying to make it more about him than anything else and so Barry Karn wants this to be about him and you can put one and two together and obviously you can tell that he has bad intentions and we see how Gohan Pan Videl and Hercule arrive to the set and very Hollywoodish now in terms of animation guys I will say that the animation uh I mean it was a lot better than I would say last week's episode episode because last week's episode or at least the episode with Hit and Goku was very very bad uh, but we get to see how you know Hercule's there and then we pan on over to Gohan how Gohan wishes Goku was there to see him in the film and then Hercule implies that it's probably best that he trains I mean we meanwhile Goku's off sneezing on King Kai's planet and stuff so we get to see how you know uh, Hercule is actually trying to you know go about the studio I mean and, and Videl, we see Videl trying to like keep his mouth shut because Hercule has a big mouth and Gohan's just trying to get to the director and stuff I mean again very mellowed 
uh, episode, you can't really expect much. And then we see Gohan encounter Barry Karn wearing the Great Sandman outfit. Now, this must have been very, 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 like, baffling to Gohan because normally the one, he's the one wearing the suit until, of course, we see Barry Karn walk on over and grab Videl's hand. And when he grabbed Videl's hand, he was insinuating and he was introducing himself as, hi, I'm Barry Karn, you know, this big mainline actor and stuff. And we see how Gohan's there with Pan. Obviously enough, he I, he's not feeling salty about it, but he sees that, hey, man, there's this dude flirting with your girl. And Barry hits on Videl and offers her, you know, his autograph and stuff. And she's not really impressed by him at all because obviously enough, she, I mean, he doesn't know that the real great Sandman is standing right behind him. And we see how Gohan, like, pretty much walks off, like, just right after Videl rejects him, which, again, uh, just goes to show that no matter how popular you are, you can't use your stardom to get ahead in life. And Videl thinks that Gohan's a lot cooler than Barry Karn anyway. And Gohan just sitting, he's standing there with his stupid green sweater, and he's like, really? Do you really think I'm cooler than that guy or whatever? And she's obviously saying yes. And then, you know, we see how, you know, Videl's trying to make light of this. She's trying to, you know, benefit Gohan by telling him, yeah, you're cooler despite your popularity and stuff. You know, trying to boost his ego. Even though Gohan doesn't really have that much of an ego, he's holding a baby with glasses and a green sweater, for Christ's sake. We see how, ultimately enough, you know, Videl is worthy of being loyal because she just walked away from a major Hollywood star. And then we pan her over to everyone at the actual set. Everyone's just watching as, you know, the stuntman is doing his thing. And her Hercule explains the concept of a stuntman to Gohan because Gohan doesn't really know what a stuntman is and that it wouldn't be beneficial for, you know, someone like Barry Karn to get injured during, you know, these scenes and stuff. So he implies that if Gohan were to take up this position, it'll be best suited that way Barry doesn't get hurt. And Barry insists that his stunt double performs without wires. Otherwise, you know, he'll be fired. So he's really being a narcissistic asshole here. Like he's just, you know, he, he's wanting things done his way. And Barry plugs one of Satan's books and he's really the only person to, you know, ever have read, you know, Satan's book, or at least the first page of it, so he wants things done his way, you know, and, and he wants his stun doubles to not wear any wires and stuff, implying that if they do get hurt, they get hurt, so what, who cares, so as long as it's not him, and then we see how Gohan walks on over to the director, and Gohan wants to be the stun double, but Barry thinks that, you know, he wants to be in the film to get popular with the girls, and he doesn't want, you know, the limelight rubbed on, rubbed on Gohan, but little does Barry Karn know that, you know, Gohan is the original great Sandman, so he's just trying to imply that, Gohan's there to steal his thunder and stuff and we see how Videl kind of interjects but Gohan's just like nah it's fine you know whatever like Gohan agrees he doesn't want to be a part of the film just for the girls or rather for Pan but you know she's still impressed by him on the fact that he wants to do this for her so he implies and he wants to do the you know take up the role of great Sandman and stuff so he puts on the helmet and then we have the real great Sandman in action and in any take we see how lights camera action everything begins and Gohan it looks like he's about to get ran over by this tank and mind you guys I was never that big of a great Sandman fan, but I, I, I've I grown to like the Sandman concept, especially during this episode, because we even saw Barry Karn observe Gohan as he was about to get ran down by this giant tank, and Gohan tanked the tank, like, he literally allowed the tank to crash into set, everyone was shocked, because everyone assumed that Gohan was dead, or something happened to him, or whatever, and we see how Gohan is in full-blown Sandman poses, he's in full-blown Sandman gimmick, and it's pretty cool, I mean, again, not really too big of a fan on the great Sandman concept, but if you guys are Sandman fans and you guys have wanted to see Sandman return, this was the perfect episode because he did the traditional pose, he did everything that needed to be done, and we see how the only person there that was satisfied or at least enjoying this was Videl for obvious reasons. Gohan does the stunt, everyone's amazed, and you know, he gives the standard great Sandman speech, obviously enough talking about how he's the protector and stuff, very cheesy in an essence, but again, if you guys are, are like really, really hardcore into Great Sandman, then this was the episode for you. So again, I want to touch up on the fact that, you know, the whole premise of this was focusing more on Barry, on how greedy he was, how he didn't want, you know, anyone else to steal his thunder because he felt like uh, he didn't want to share the girls and stuff with Gohan because he felt as if Gohan was just there for the girls and he was just like, I don't really care about that and stuff. And we see how, you know, what a gosh, I mean, we all thought it was going to be like this, you know, crazy monster alien, but in fact, it looks like a little Digimon. Like he just came out the jar and he flew out there and he's going to be making its way towards Earth because it seeks darkness in people's hearts. And we get to see that during the preview of the end of the episode as well. But nonetheless, we see even after that, after everyone was beginning to go home, we see how Barry complains that Gohan's Sandman pose was different than the one he came up with. And the director doesn't really care, but we see how Barry Karn is going about the set and he wants things done his way. He's not even great Sandman and he's talking about the poses. He's talking about how great Sandman doesn't really do that. He does it his way, implying that Barry wants, you know, 
you know, certain poses done the way he wants and stuff. And Gohan doesn't want to be in the film, but Videl's in all for it. So, you know, they wear the mask or whatever, and his identity won't be revealed. But you can just tell based on Gohan's demeanor that Gohan just doesn't want to do the film. And we see how everyone's beginning to whisper to Gohan. Plus, Videl says, you know, she's being reminded of the good old days, and that gets her excited, quote unquote. You guys get what I'm saying? So we see Gohan, he's walking down the street, he's reading a script. I mean, again, this is very weird, uh, especially having to look at Gohan now, because guys, you guys remember when Gohan was a badass fighting Cell, fighting Majin Buu, and now, you know, we see him reading a script, he's a Hollywood guy, Krillin's in the episode, we see Krillin pulling somebody over, there's a bunch of crap going on with Krillin, there's a couple of bank robbers or whatever, and we see how Krillin is there with his trusty little helmet and stuff, and we see how hostages are there, and uh, we see meanwhile Krillin tries to fight off the two thugs, and we see how Gohan shows up as Great Saiyan Man, and actually enough, the two uh, bank robbers actually remember Great Saiyan Man from the original manga, and Gohan butts in, and the thugs remember him, but he's forgotten about them, so suddenly he remembers who they are, because if you guys pan back to Dragon Ball Z, and they actually get to showcase this during the episode itself, um, we get to see how Gohan was the one that defeated those two with Videl way back when from Dragon Ball Z, so it's pretty cool to see that throwback, because a lot of people tend to have forgotten, you know, how important he was during that time, because believe it or not, guys, Great Saiyan Man, he was an important figure in Dragon Ball Z, and we see how the two thugs, I mean, they remember Gohan, and, and they're scared out their minds, I mean, we see how all of a sudden, one of them begins to, like, glow red, and we see how something's going on with him, and of course, I mean, Gohan's starless as to what the heck is going on, but obviously enough, we all know that this has something to do with Wadagash, possibly, because Wadagash appears, and, you know, possesses the crook, and powers him up, and Gohan, you know, begins fighting him, so it's not even a little bit of, you know, it, it sort of reminds you of Baby in an essence, even though Wadagash isn't really Baby, he infects the host and, and, and turns the host a lot more powerful than they originally were by unleashing the evil in their hearts, so nonetheless, we see how Wadagash is there, and, and this dude begins to pump up, I mean, muscles everywhere, sort of like Spopovich and Yamu, like all ripped and whatever, and we see how Wadagash, you know, infects the host, and he's fighting Gohan, and Gohan's having a tough time, he's like, what the heck, at least Gohan is fighting in this episode, guys, even though, uh, I mean, I, I would have to say it reminds you of Baby, even though it isn't really Baby in an essence, we see how Great Sandman quickly gives them the L, and we progress on forward to the episode as Gohan tries to do his Kamehameha, in which, I mean, again, it's nostalgia because we see how police officers are up in the sky, and I mean, even though Gohan defeats both crooks, he sees how all around him, you know, there's something going on, and he sees Wadagash escaping, in essence, and Wadagash is pretty much wreaking havoc all over the town, so this is obviously going to pan on over and carry on over into Dragon Ball Super Episode 74, in which case, I will say, guys, uh, if you guys enjoy filler-like episodes, this was enjoyable for several reasons, because you get to see uh, people's true colors, you get to see how people operate, like Barry Karn and stuff, so there were certain things in this episode that I will say were good. Overall, it wasn't anything too exciting. But uh, the premise of Barry Karn being, you know, uh, manipulative and greedy and not wanting to give Gohan any shine and stuff, it, it was an overall decent episode, and it will definitely carry on over to Dragon Ball Super Episode 74 with a brand new ending theme to the episode, which I think is very good uh, because it's been quite a while since we've gotten a new ending uh, for Dragon Ball Super in terms of themes. And of course, towards the very end, it was funny because we see how this one girl's flirting with Gohan, um, and we see how he, I mean, she's trying to make a move on him, and he's just like, no, 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 no. I mean, because that's what happens when you have the powers uh, of a Hollywood star, per se, when you have the reputation. Uh, but we have a brand new ending theme, guys. And overall, this episode was relatively decent. But post your comments down below, guys. What are your overall thoughts on this episode with Gohan? Do you guys believe that we'll ever get to see an episode with Gohan actually training and getting stronger? Because, I mean, with this upcoming Universal Tournament, Gohan doesn't have a choice but to defend his family. So after having a look at this, I'm not going to say that this was the best filler episode. I would have to say the best filler episode so far was the baseball episode. However, it was kind of cool to see Gohan actually involved in something. But post your comments down below, guys. What are your overall thoughts on Gohan's role? What are your overall thoughts on Gohan's expectations in the Universal Tournament? And what are your overall thoughts on next week's episode starring Gohan yet again? Comment down below, guys. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you guys love Dragon Ball, if you guys cannot wait for more Dragon Ball content, guys, make sure to stay
stay subscribed to this channel turn on notifications that way you guys are always aware with any video i post out guys and of course if you guys enjoyed the review make sure to punch that like button square in the face i'll be covering dragon ball super's english dub later on tonight alongside dragon ball kai so make sure you guys go on ahead and tune back onto the channel that way you guys can go on ahead and catch up on these reviews and breakdowns and again guys lots of dragon ball talk to have tonight so thank you all for watching once again and i'll be seeing you all in tonight's dragon ball super episode one english dub review take it easy guys peace